bunch of liars. Where is your God now? You're a woman? You need to be quiet, fear mongers. That's all they are. They're always talking about this Jesus. Get tired of them talking. Nothing but a bunch of nutcase, religious fanatics. That's all they are. I get tired. I wish they'd just shut up. I always telling me what I need, Jesus. What they need to do is shut up. Mockers, brothers and sisters. We hear them every day. How do we deal with these unreasonable people? Warning. Scoffers, scoffers in the last days. There will be scoffers in the last days under the gospel. Men who make light of sin mark at the salvation by Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the coming King, the coming Messiah. They believe not that he will come because they see no changes. Therefore, they fear not God. Songs 55, 19. They lose their way. In 2 Peter 1, 20, he speaks of this interpretation of prophecy that the scoffers would mark at the long delay of the Lord's coming foretold by the prophets. The word of God in 2 Peter 3.3 3 says, Above all, you must understand that in the last days scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They, uh, this is what they're saying. As we speak now, where is this coming that he promised? Our ancestors died. Everything goes on just like it was from the beginning. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, people, from Jude, from Jude 116, it states that these people are nothing but grumblers, fault finders. They have their own evil desires, their own ambitions, their own motives. They boast about themselves and they flatter others just to get their own advantage. That's all they do. How do we deal with them? But well, we deal with them by the word of God. And the, and the word of God tells us how to handle these scoffers and markers. Many pastors and leaders and others have asked this question. What do I do with a person who is unreasonable? They complain. They gossip. They're never happy. And when I try and when we try to reason with them, they are absolutely unwilling to listen or even try to build some type of common ground. The book of Proverbs defines such a person as a mocker. Mockers means in Hebrew, one who scorf or scorn a vice, a person resent correction. They disdain, disregard, and ignore it. The proud and arrogant person. Marker is his name. Behaves with dis disrespectful fury and excessive pride. These people are very prideful. You cannot tell them nothing. And that's Proverbs 21, 24. And the word says that when you find a proud and an arrogant person, their name is a marker. That's what you should, that's what they label are. So what do we do with these people? How do we deal with them? Number one, don't try to correct them. It's a waste of time and energy. But even beyond that, you will only invite insults. So don't do that. It's better to smile and listen. Sometimes that's good and sometimes it's not. Sometimes it just you just need to just move on. Don't even bother giving them the time of day. Then it is tried to then you try to correct someone who has proven themselves to to be unreasonable. You can't reason with a person that who's unreasonable. It's like trying to give medicine to a dead person. So it's a waste of time. Proverbs 9, 7 says, Whoever corrects a mocker invites insults. Whoever rebukes a wicked man incurs abuse. That is so true. Number two, don't forget God. It is important to remember that God is the ultimate source of the reward of the reward, even if it feels if the marker is getting the upper hand on you. 
it's better to allow them to temporary to have a sense of victory of maintaining uh, an attitude of humility before the Lord it's best to do that he God marks proud markers but give grace to the humble Proverbs 3 34 amen number three don't become like them when someone is in your face with ridicule in their voice it's easy to become reacting and mirror their demeanor right back at them that is so true but this is what the words that do not answer a fool according to his folly or you will be just like him answer a fool according to his folly and he will be wise in his own eyes because he think he didn't did something good oh he's like I got them back I told them out that's a fool you can't, I mean, a fool don't listen. Proverbs 29, 9, I like the way uh, Proverbs 29 says this, 9. When a wise man has a controversy with a foolish man, you can expect that this foolish man will, either he will have rage or laugh, or he will do both, and there will be no rest. That is so true. I have seen this proven over time and time in my lifetime. Number four, don't try to win the argument. Do try to win others. In Proverbs 26, seem almost contradictory. But you have to see, it says, don't answer them. Then it says, if you do answer them. But what do we learn? When you're dealing with a fool, there is no way to win. And that is true. But it is very critical in what you say and do before others. Because they are observing you. So what is the answer? Not trying to win the argument with a fool. Because you're not gonna you're not gonna win an argument with them. You can't reason with a fool. You answer and maintain a blameless attitude that will help you win the hearts and minds of those who are observing this. Amen. Don't argue with foolish people. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest you be like him yourself. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he's wise, he's wise in his own eyes. Do not speak to fools, for they will scorn you, prudent, your prudent, wise words. Do not have anything to do with foolish and stupid discussions, because you know they breed arguments. 2 Timothy 2.23 So what do we do? We were warned. Do not, do not, do not have nothing to do with them. In a discussion. A fool is any person who does not act wisely. They do, they do not heed to the warnings or the requirements of God. Therefore, a fool is nothing but a wicked man, an enemy of God. A fool has said in the heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. And, they're not, they, and they have no regrets of it either, brothers and sisters. So, there is none that does good. A... A fool is 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 a wicked person that thumbs their nose up to God and laugh at God and think it's funny. Number five, don't keep them around or don't try to make them happy. You'll never make them happy because they are miserable people and they want you to be miserable too. They get their kicks when they see you unhappy. The only way you're going to get any relief is when the marker leaves. And I know this sounds harsh, but it is the truth, brothers and sisters. Even in the church house, even in a relationship. You just need uh, you need to pray about that. Ask God what you need to do with, uh, with those kind of people. But the word tells us do not have nothing to do with those kind of people. Um... Um, point number two says some churches relationship needs to grow first through subtraction meaning getting rid of these people when the right people when they leave the atmosphere change and that's no lie brothers and sisters I um, used to go to early morning prayer and start up prayer early in the morning it was nothing it was only two of us and I get that very early in the morning just to set the atmosphere uh, before church service began but there was one woman who did not did not want us to do prayer she was against it so one morning I was sitting there um, 
praying with my eyes closed and all of a sudden the atmosphere changed and I'm like what happened you know and I opened my eyes the same woman that was coming up against us had walked in the sanctuary and sat on the pew she wasn't praying she was just staring out in space and she was there very early she don't usually get there early but she I know but her motives were wrong when she came there so it was hard for me to press in the atmosphere. I knew I was fighting in the atmosphere. And then time she walked out the room, that sanctuary, the atmosphere said, woof. It changed quickly because I was not fighting anymore. The spirit of the Lord was not being grieved. So you have to drive out the markers, according to uh, Proverbs 22.10. And when you drive them out, strife will lead, quarry will lead, insults will lead. Get rid of them. Because I tell you, if you remove the firewood, the gossiping will stop. A beating shall come unto them, according to Proverbs 18.16. I mean 18.6. Number six, don't deal with them softly. Be kind, but be firm. I tell you, if you deal with them softly, that won't work either. If you deal with them harshly, they have a legitimate reason to criticize you. So you must stand, if you must stand your ground, speak little, but don't yield. Yield. Apply the appropriate decision or discipline. Okay? When a marker is punished, the simple gain wisdom when a wise man is instructed to get knowledge. Surely a serpent will bite without enchantment. A bladder is no better. I tell you. A word is from, uh, from the mouth of a wise or gracious. But fools are cons consumed by their own lips. That is so true. The quiet word of a wise are more to be heed than the shout of a ruler of a fools. Of fools. Amen. Number seven. Number seven and the last point. Don't let a marker get into your spirit or under your skin. It is not worth it. Don't let them affect your spirit. Forgive them. Release it to God. Let God judge you because his throne is greater. And he said, whoever called for justice because his throne is justice and righteous. That is the name of his throne. And he will call. He, 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 his weights are not unbalanced. He have even weights, and he will judge fairly. Don't stay up late thinking about what you're going, how you're going to respond to these people. Don't waste your energy and time with them. Deal with, deal with it in God's wisdom. Be surrendered to God, yet be shrewd. Marcus stirs up a city, but a wise man turn away anger. Proverbs twenty nine eight. Blessed are the peacemakers, for we are the children of God, my brothers and sisters. If we are striving for peace, we are called children of God. Because our Father is peace. He don't like mess. He don't like people being in divided and his children being divided. That's not God. That's the enemy. I just also like to give credit to the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, Lord Yahshua, and Addison Park Church, North Hill, Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, because um, they had a lot of research, uh, a lot of uh, answers there. Because I was really great concerned about these markers that has been affecting the church a lot and there's not enough teaching out there across the pulpit that is teaching this so we must use the word as I swore the truth to use it every day because this is an ongoing battle brothers and sisters and it's getting greater and greater keep the faith my brothers and sisters we're almost home blessings and love to you